Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here again from Scratch and today we are looking at Mixcraft Recording Studio 9 by Acoustica. Now this is a DAW or digital audio workstation basically put into simple English terms. This is a program you use to make music. There are all kinds of them out there. Uh, Pro Tools, uh, FL Studio, uh, Reaper, those are some of the most popular out there. There's also LMMS and open source option. I've done uh, coverage on Reaper and LMMS. I'll get to that at the very end of the video. But today what we're looking at is Mixcraft and to be honest, music is not really my forte. So I throw out the standard disclaimer to start this. Your ears will bleed. Probably by the end of this video, I apologize in advance. Uh, I'm keeping audiologists around the world employed, uh, but for, for you musician people, yeah, this might hurt a bit. So the reason why we are talking about Mixcraft 9 today is because it is available in a humble bundle that is going on right now that I covered earlier in this week, the Mega Sound Designer Loop Crate Bundle. Now, if you're a musician uh, and you've got a lot of experience with DAWs, you're probably not going to get a ton out of this video, but you may get a lot out of this bundle because really the star of this bundle is a whole bunch of of samples. You get 13,000 royalty-free loops and samples from industry veterans, Acoustica, Cherry Audio, and Soundtrack Loops. So that was covered in that other video. I'm not going to get into a ton of detail there, but if you come into here and you get to a certain tiers, uh, so probably $20 US, Home Studio is a version available there, and then if you go up to the $32 range, you're getting the uh, Virtual Grand Piano VST, and then finally what we are talking about today, available at, I think that'd probably be 30 bucks US. Uh, we've got Mixcraft Studio, Mixcraft 9 Recording Studio, and that's what we're specifically looking at today. But even if you aren't really interested in the DOS, this huge collection of samples and loops might be of interest to you. So I will link that video down below as well. All right, so that is that. Let us jump in and take a look at Mixcraft 9 Recording Studio. And as mentioned early on, this is a DAW. What you do here is basically bring in various different tracks of music, of vocals, uh, of instrumentation, etc., all together. Uh, you organize them across the timeline at a certain uh, RPM or beat or whatever speed you want to go. You got things in here like uh, a metronome to, to coordinate the amount of time. You've got the ability to, to loop and link things down. Now, one thing I have to say, and this might just be because I have so much prior DAW experience. I've used four or five or six of them at this point in time. Jumping in and learning this thing was trivially easy. And I'm actually really impressed with the Mixcraft 9. I've actually only had one issue, and that was, I don't know why, after initial installation, I didn't get any audio until I rebooted my computer. But other than that, it has been super, super simple to figure out. Uh, and it comes absolutely loaded out of the box with the stuff to work from. And this is one of those things that really impressed me. Like if you're starting with something like uh, Reaper or LMMS, well, more so Reaper than LMMS, you're actually going to have to come up with and install a number of VSTs and samples and all that stuff yourself. Now, if you're an established musician, you probably have your go-to favorites already, but you're going to see in a second that Mixcraft Studio 9 comes loaded out of the box for this stuff. And it's also got a couple of interesting uh, kind of uniquenesses to it and that it also handles video, which is a little bit rare. But you can see here a number of different tracks um, and instruments being layered and looped together. A lot of these are just straight out uh, waveform loops that you're seeing in here. Some of this is instrumentation. Uh, but put all this stuff together and then here is your music. I'm going to play this for a split second, but here's the end result. His vocals are going to kick in in just a second. Now, I'm not going to keep playing this because there you go. So you see across the bottom, you've got your mixer where you've got all the various different channels you can control. They're labeled at the bottom there. And you can have each one kind of handled separately. Each track obviously can have uh, effects applied to it. So you see some of these actually have some special effects applied. So here we go. Audio effect. This one's got a TB parametric equalizer, for example. And one of the things, again, I like with Mixcraft is it has a number of these things out of the box, pre-configured and ready to go for you. And here you're seeing a pretty elaborate example, which actually may be copyrighted. So that's why I'm going to stay away from performing it. But I'm going to show you things kind of from a more from scratch approach. So you can have, uh, bring in a video track if you so wish I'll show you how to add one later. We can do so. Here we're doing it one instrumental, four audio tracks. Works for me. Uh, I'm not going to work with any of the rest of that stuff. So, yeah, we'll go over the defaults. Here we go. Created a new project for us. So, let's say we've got our um, acoustic piano up here at the top and we want to start um, working on that. Basically, come here into the timeline where we want it to stop and just do a double click. We could come in here and we start recording step by step with the piano. Uh, you've also got the option of scoring it or uh, hearing doing your notes this way, which I found was useful for something like a recorder. And basically you can come in here and start playing it like a piano. So you can set your note time, notes uh, speed, your velocity of it, and so on. And you basically just start
There you go. So there is our music track right there. We can repeat it and loop it across our timeline very, very easily. And now here again is one of the areas where as a noob or a bit of an idiot, I really appreciate what Mixcraft brings to the table. Is I can click this little keyboard right here and we've got a ton of instruments out of the box. Right now we're at acoustic piano. Uh, so we can come down here, there's a number of different options. So instead of our piano that we just made this brilliant track for, so let me just put that on loop. All right, so there is our audio track that we just did in there. Now let's switch that out instead to uh, a virginal keyboard. I had no idea what that means, but it sounds good to me. All right. There you go. So now we're into a different thing, or let's just go straight out. We're going to a reed instrument here. We'll play a blues harp. So it's got a ton of instrumentation. That sounds horrible, but it, uh, let's go here. So wind, let's go up to a recorder. That's the only instrument I actually know how to play. And... There you go. So you got a ton of different uh, instrumentation kind of pre-configured out of the box. You bring it up here, you can move it around very easily. Again, you can resize it, it automatically handles all those things for you. Change out your speed, etc. going on down here. Of course, you can hook up a MIDI keyboard and have it record that way. Or you can use this on-screen keyboard like I have done right here. So there's we've done a very simple track. Now we're getting to the nicety of this bundle. Once again, head on back here. You'll see there is a ton of different loops, but also um, Mixcraft Studio 9 comes with 7,500 loops out of the box. Plus, this is where you'd bring in all of the rest of these if you got it from the bundle. So now we're going to get into the loops. That's what all these various different audio tracks, we're going to bring some of those in. So come down here, and we're in the library, and you can see we got a, a number of different categories here. So let's go get some, I don't know, let's get some kind of... Uh, yeah, disco, of course. Actually, no, let's do drum loops. We're going to bring in, this is a pretty common thing. So you get drum loops, and you got a ton of different options down here. Again, all royalty-free. So if you're looking for that club beat thing to go with our recorder. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so let's drop in some uh, club beats to go with our recorder there. Snap that in there, and then let's just bring that so it's the same size. And let's actually just bring it so our song starts at the beginning of the timeline. All right, so there we now have our recorder and our drum beat mix. Oh yeah, that's just wonderful. Now I can come down here, obviously. My drum beats might be um, a little overpowering on this one, so let's drop that down a little bit. There we go. So now our recorder is just a rocking out the scene. So I've got to go to recorder. Let's add a little bit of sound to it. So we got here a number of different special effects built in. Obviously, you can bring in your own um, various different uh, from outside. There's a couple that are actually included inside of the, the bundle as well. So let's go in here and bring in a flanger. So here we got our flanger here, our electric guitar flanger that we're going to apply to our recorder. And let's just do some stuff. I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm just going to I'm just going to do this. All right. There we go. Random stuff. All right. Our recorder is sounding pretty synth and sci-fi and awesome. All right. So we go there. We can start chaining effects, of course. We come down here. Um, so let's throw in a reverb on there. So we got classic reverb, or we got the acoustic reverb. Let's do the acoustic reverb there. Let's whack up the wet. Uh, let's increase the reverb. So now we're going to have some real cool recorder. There we go. So if you want to hear, by the way, just your one channel, you can come up here and go solo. There you go. Or what you could do is just mute the channel you don't want to hear, turn solo off, and now you're just going to hear all your other channels. All right, so there we go. If we want, we can start bringing in some other effects. Again, we go back over here. And I just love the fact that this library is fully populated already, so you don't even need, like, there's another five or 6,000 that we're seeing in this collection that we can add in, but just out of the box. Uh, Mixcraft just comes loaded with samples. So come here. I think we got a couple of vocal tracks. Yeah, okay, let's do a... A vocal, oh yeah, breathing. Let's get some breathing in there. All right, so there we go. That'll really add to it. Oh yeah. All right, so there we go. We've just made the ultimate in music. So let's go back here and we'll see what this sounds like. Oh yeah, I'm getting better at this. Okay, so that's an idea of what Mixcraft is all about. If you've worked with a DAW, you're gonna find that a lot of this is just looking pretty much exactly like what you've come to expect from a DAW. Come up here, we can go ahead, at this point in time, we can burn it to a CD, uh, even a label a CD if we so wished. Uh, and you've also got the ability, obviously, to uh, export out. So you'd mix down to, and then you've got MP3, OGG, or Og Vorbis, uh, WA, Wave, and FLAC files out of the box. Not sure why these ones are canceled. I think it's that's only for movie files. And that segues nicely into what I want to talk about next. This is a little bit unique to Mixcraft 9, and it's also one of their weaker features, to be honest. I can come up here and add a new track, and I can add a new video track. And what we can do now is we can bring in 
a video. So where do I bring in the video? Oh, right here. So right click and I bring in, so we've got a couple different options with video. So we can bring in video. We can bring in stills to go with the video. We can add some text on top of it. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to load in a video clip. I think I have some here in Dropbox. Uh, where is Dropbox? Uh, see users moi, and Dropbox. All right. Under temp. Let's bring in, so one of the videos I did recently, RPG Maker, we'll bring in the MP4 here. Now, interestingly enough too, I've also had it fail on the codec for videos I've brought in, which is a little interesting because they're all recorded using the same thing. So I don't know why it periodically fails with a couple things and not other, uh, but a lot of DAWs don't have video support out of the box. Uh, so if you need to do some really simple video editing, this might be a choice for you. So you can see it brought it in didn't split out my sound. Oh, still working on it. All right, we'll give it a second. It's also going to bring in the sound channel as well. So we can bring those over there. So we've got a video channel working on. There is the audio from that video channel. This is going to result in a very weird video. So here you're seeing a preview of the video in action. We're also going to get a low ladies and gentlemen, my first game. So there we go. So I'm going to probably not want to have my audio in here. So I'm just going to get rid of that channel. Oops. That channel. All right, I think I can, I can delete it from over here, but anyways, we'll just mute it for now. Now what you can do with your video to a certain degree, you can do some very basic editing. So with our video track selected, I could come in here, for example, and I could do a, a split at this point. So video, um, okay, where did you go? Right click here and I can do a split and then I could go to here, for example, and I could do a split. And then I can just delete everything that's in the middle and we'll bring this back up. So if you wanted something you wanted to edit out of your video, you do have some very, very basic video editing options here. There's nothing there for uh, transitions and so on, but we can also do something, some very simple stuff. Uh, so for example, I could add a track for um, a text track you can see right here and we could overlay some track. Uh, so I come here and add some text and I could say, copyright 2020 or whatever. And I can have that imposed over top of it. We got a little bit of control over the text. Uh, if I went back over there, I screwed that up, but um, you've got the ability to fade it in, fade it out, but that's basically the extent of video support there. Nothing that's really going to uh, excite me over much. I, I personally wouldn't use this as a video editor. It's a little bit too basic, but if you don't have anything on hand, you may appreciate that functionality as well. And that's somewhat unique uh, to the Mixcraft 9 experience. On top of that, you've got your master track down here. You can apply uh, effects across that will apply to all of the various different things that we, we put together here. And in a nutshell, that is it, Mixcraft 9. Again, the things that really, really shine to me, first off, is it's really intuitive. Everything worked exactly like I expected it to work. But the big things for me, to be honest, is this, ooh, zombie. We got a whole bunch of samples and stuff here, such as zombie rock drums. Not sure what makes that zombie, but you, you have a ton of tooling here. Again, you have your instrumentation stuff that you can come in here. You've got uh, various different ways to compose your music. You can hook up a MIDI keyboard. All the stuff that you would expect from a DAW is here. Again, where they do impress me is the out of the box, the compilation of... Um, the, the instrumentation that actually comes with this thing. And again, the 7,500 plus samples that come out of the box too. So if you're looking for more of a turnkey solution, uh, Mixcraft 9 is quite shockingly good. I found it really, really easy to learn. I don't think I ever once had to look at help for doing anything. Um, I actually found it easier to use than Reaper, which I found a little bit shocking. Um, and I, I, the one thing I found, so you have a couple of other options out there. Things I have, oops, I didn't mean to start that. Oops. All right, so you've got a couple of other options I've covered out there. Uh, one of the ones I covered in the past was Reaper. Uh, I, I was a big fan of Reaper, but it doesn't come with a bunch out of the box. And it is uh, also, I think it's about 60 bucks. So there is a price tag kind of comparable to what you're paying here. This is a little bit uh, more expensive when you compare it to the, the on sale price here. But Reaper is more you're going to be setting a bunch of things up yourself. On top of that, I've also covered LMMS, uh, which for some reason I didn't do an initial title graphic on. This is an open source alternative here, but it's a lot more about uh, synth music, 8-bit, uh, 16-bit style sound and such. It does come pre-configured with more options out of the hop, which is nice to see. But... Yeah, I, I found it a lot more difficult to learn than I did in this particular case. And all, like, 
all honesty, Mixcraft 9, uh, I, I just picked it up. It just worked for me. Again, some of that is I've gotten more and more experience with DAWs as life goes on, but I love the fact it pre-configured with all of these things for me and the huge sample library that comes with it, and it's got a user interface that I just find intuitive. The only thing that I don't like, and I, I don't get this, I don't know why, but to go up and down, you use the arrow keys or the scroll bar here. No middle mouse button, no right mouse button, no control in space or anything. That's something that's kind of universal. It drives me nuts, but... Uh, pretty small complaint on the whole. And again, one thing I do warn you about when you first install Mixcraft 9, for some strange reason, you may have to do a reboot. All right, so that is it. That, again, I am not an audio guy by any means, day or, or of the week or anything like that. But what I would probably use if I was going to compose something right now on a Windows PC is Acoustica, to be honest. I, I like the fact that it has all this stuff out of the box. I like the fact that I now own a ton of samples to work with it. Uh, there is this also lighter version of it, um, Mixcraft 8, and in all honesty, I didn't see uh, the point in it. If you're going to come in here, if you're in for a pound, oh, what is it, in for a penny, in for a pound, uh, go all in, get the premium version. It's a stripped down version, but I didn't find it any easier to use. I just found it stripped down. And another thing you may be wondering about is, okay, well, what about the other Mixcraft versions? And there are... Um, alternatives out there. So you've got Mixcraft and then there's a pro version of it out as well. And you may be wondering, okay, what do you and don't you get? Well, you get pretty much the exact same functionality except for things that are missing. So some, it's got additional instrumentation, additional effects, and so on. Now, interestingly, one of the additional instrumentations though is this virtual grand piano that's actually included here. So basically, sorry, wrong spot, here. So uh, it, it's pretty much the same product, just has even more out of the box. So it's one of those things you could grow into. There is upgrade pricing and you do qualify for that, by the way. But it's not like you're getting a stripped down version. You're just getting less toys to play with in the box. But this box came really well populated, in my opinion. So anyways, that is it. That is uh, Mixcraft uh, Studio. I say Mixcraft 9 Recording Studio by Acoustica, hands-on. Uh, I, I kind of thought it would take me quite a while to learn it and pick it up and at least get the basics of it. And, and amazingly, I just kind of, it just works. I like the interface. There's no confusion here and everything just kind of works like you would expect. And again, tons of stuff out of the box. So if you don't have your pre-configured set of loops and samples and instruments and all that stuff ready to go, this is a great place to start because, hey, it's got it all for you. Anyways, that's it. I'd be really interested in hearing what, you know, the pro people out there have to say. You know, are you using uh, Pro Tools or FL Studio or possibly something like Reaper over Mixcraft? And if so, why? Or have you just not checked out Mixcraft? I'm curious to hear what you have to say. And yeah, that's it. Talk to you all later.